Welcome back. Do you want to take the best possible photos with this phone, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II? We're going to have to use the Photo Pro app. And unfortunately this app requires some photography knowledge to get the most out of it. And I'm going to cover exactly what you need to know in this video. You might end up taking a photo like this on a sunny day, and you can see here the bright spots have lost detail. Then you might try this, and now the shaded areas have lost detail. What you really want is a photo like this. So let's figure out what you need to do. This is part one where I cover the basics. Part two will go deeper with raw photos and getting the absolute best image quality. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have the shutter button set up to launch Photo Pro like this. Now this is pretty simple. We just have to go into the camera settings of the main camera app. If we go to the wrench at the top here, we can then go down to bottom where we see launch with camera key and if we tap this you can see we can pick launch photography pro. I'm also enjoying this uh, Spigen case that I got for the phone. Uh, this is the liquid case I think. I'll drop a link in the uh, description. What's cool about it is that the shutter button has a better feel now. So when I press halfway you know, there's a really nice tactile response and then when I press all the way you know it's, it's pretty clear when I'm halfway in full press which is something that I uh, mentioned in a previous video. All right, let's dive into the app. So here we're going to use the shutter key as a shortcut to jump in. And let's take a look. So if you look on the left here, we'll see the mode dial. There's automatic, program, shutter priority, and manual. Now in most cases, you're going to want to use a shutter priority or program. I'm going to walk through exactly when to use which one. Now auto obviously turns everything into automatic, and you don't really have any control over the picture. Program is a great starting point if you're new to manual controls because the camera will pick uh, some settings for you, but you can tweak them as you desire and learn what they do. You'll also want to turn on the display here. Uh, you can either show nothing or you can turn on everything. And what you really want is this histogram at the bottom right because it'll help you get the perfect exposure. Essentially get the bright and dark spots exactly how you want them. At the bottom left here, we can change the lens we're using. So by default, it's a 24 millimeter, which is the best quality sensor on this camera, or we can go to 16, which is the wide angle, or 70, which is the telephoto. And all of them give us the same controls and the settings here. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind is the 24 millimeter will give you the fastest burst speeds, uh, but all three work fairly well. And when we're within one of these, we can do a digital zoom. So like in 24, we can digital zoom up to 70, uh, and then from 70, we can go to 200. Uh, the digital zoom is, you know what you'd expect it's not great uh, but I have used it time to time and it can it can be helpful for getting the perfect composition I mean here this close-up of the head of the owl is is not bad so on the right side there's a bunch of controls but there's a few that are more important than others so the one at the top you'll see is the exposure value and this is just going to help you get a brighter or darker picture depending on your preference so here in this case you know this photo of the owl you can see it's kind of dark so if I tap here and go to like plus one or so, you'll see that it looks much better. Uh, in other cases, you may want to go darker. So if you go to like negative one here, you can see the image got dark. You'll see that the histogram at the bottom is updating real time. So you can see everything to the left is showing that there's a lot of dark pixels. And if I go bright, everything kind of shifts to the right here. And this is important because as you take photos, you don't want to have any of these uh, bars spill over to the edge. And when I go to negative two, you'll see that the bars get scrunched to the left. And what's happening here is we're losing detail in the dark spots of this photo, uh, which is really bad if you, if you want to get a, a clear photo of that owl. And so overall, you want to keep the bars away from either side and somewhere in the middle like this. And if you want a brighter photo, you can you know, shift it to the right a little bit, uh, but you want to keep it from hitting that right side. So let's dive into the menus here. Uh, so file format, JPEG is fine for now. And the next video will go into how to shoot raw. Then if you go to exposure, you know, we have multiple modes here. Most often you're going to want to leave it on auto HDR. Uh, that's not going to work with raw photos, but in general, it's going to give you the most dynamic range. Then if you come down to focus, you can leave these the way they are. Uh, as well as setup, when we come down here, um, you can also leave this as is. Uh, the one thing that you'll probably want is to turn on grid lines here, which gives you the rule of thirds grid uh, that helps you uh, get a better composition. All right, let's go back into the camera. So let's take a look at some of the other controls here. 
Um, AF on lets you lock the autofocus. So if you turn it on, let's say I bring up my hand, you can see that it's not going to shift to my hand. It's going to stay focused on the owl. Um, auto exposure lock is the same thing, except it's with exposure. So it will actually focus on my hand, but the exposure is going to be set to whatever I had with the owl. Some of the most commonly used settings are down here. So the first one here is the drive mode, which is how many shots it's going to take. So you know, either you're going to be doing single shot or you might be doing a burst where you set it to, you know, like the high mode here, um, or you might want to do a timer. And then if you come across here, the next one is focus mode. If you're trying to catch movement, you're probably going to want to set it to AFC, which is for continuous autofocus. But by default, a uh, single shot autofocus is perfectly fine. The next one is focus area, which you can leave it as is. Um, also, you know, auto white balance is fine down here. Uh, focus detection is fine to leave it on uh, to detect eyes. And JPEG is fine for, for now. Uh, metering mode is also fine. The only other one that you want to care about is the ISO. And so by default, it's going to be set to auto, uh, which, is, which is great, uh, where it'll set the sensitivity of the sensor you know, based on the other settings of the phone. Now, a quick tip for you is if we set this to a high speed like this, you see that the shutter speed is 125, but if I go back to single, now it's 140th. Now what's happening here is the app was giving us a faster shutter speed so we can get more photos per second. But it's a trade-off because it was setting the ISO sensitivity really high. A higher sensitivity is going to give you a noisier image. So in general, you want to try to keep your shutter speed as low as possible, like 140th here, when we have the ISO is 200. Um, but obviously, if you're trying to get you know high-speed bursts, a higher sensitivity is going to be required. Shutter speed and ISO are the main two things that you have to manage when shooting with Photo Pro. So if you're trying to control the shutter speed, uh, that's when you want to go into shutter priority, which is the S mode. And when we go here, you'll see at the top right, it turns into the shutter speed here. And a great thing about the Xperia is that it has a great image stabilization system. So I can go down as slow as one tenth of a second most of the time, just holding it with my hand, and get a sharp image. And so you can see we have one tenth, the great thing about this is now the ISO is very low. It's 64, so we're going to get a very nice, clean image. Now, if you look at the histogram down here, you can see that the pixels are getting cut off on the right here. And what that means is the, the picture is too bright. So what I can do is, in shutter priority, I can just speed up the shutter, maybe go to 1 15th, and now you see everything kind of shifts to the left a little bit, and we get a more balanced image. And if we're in a very bright condition, like outside on a sunny day, we can go really fast with the shutter speed. I mean, if we keep going, I mean, it can go up all the way to uh, one eight thousandth of a second, which is very fast. A great use of shutter priority is when you want to stop motion. And if you take a look at these photos here that I took uh, of this bee here, Photo Pro initially had picked too slow a shutter speed to really catch the bee without motion blur. So I switched it to shutter priority and set it to one eight hundred of a second to get these shots. Pretty impressive to get this out of a phone. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I try to keep this video from being too long. Uh, subscribe for part two where we'll dive into the raw photos, which require a bit more effort, but will give you the absolute best image quality out of the Xperia 1 Mark II. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.